Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wild and Out. I am Hyperin, your host, and today I am joined by Dr. Fish and Tom Carter. Dr. Fish, how are you doing? I am doing well. I remembered to unmute myself, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. We've got a, a, sh a sh bit of a shorter show from usual, because there are no match previews, but this will be a good one. Yep, for sure. Tom, how you been? How you been? I'm doing really good. I just took a nap, so I'm ready to talk about wild. That sounds lovely. Use one myself. But uh, but yeah, uh, like mentioned, a little bit of a shorter show this week. Um, as the because of the mini set, um, the deck submission deadline was extended, so we do not have previews for this week. But um, we do still have stuff covering the previous week. Um, so, with that being said, we can uh, dive on in with our Player of the Week, Fish. Alright, so, this week's Player of the Week is Killinger. Uh, so, let me pull this up. Uh, he had a very tough task of going up against Memnarch, and especially, it gets even diff more difficult when you're trying to win from being down 0-2. However, in the style of the entirety of World Shakers versus Wokage, the match went to... Five went to game five and Killinger completed the reverse sweep, helping World Shakers to a close but much needed weak win. Yeah. Congrats. Great job, uh, great job, Killinger. Yeah. Congrats to uh to World Shakers. Yeah. A good win. Alright. Alright. 
Well, with that, um, move on into our meta overview here. Um, so, first thing, Demon Hunter, um, just completely gone now. It, yeah, we we had we saw like one Demon Hunter last week, and now it's just completely gone. Last doesn't really exist in Wild. Um, yeah, kind of unfortunate. Aggro Demon Hunter was starting to shine a little bit, but Drak and Multi Strike nerf for standard just killed it completely. So, no more Demon Hunter in Wild. <laughs> um, it's not the only place Drew, where it's dead. <laughs> Druid, uh, massive, massive variety in the Druid decks. Um, Cthune Druid still the most brought Druid deck by far. Um, followed by various alignment Druids, while um. Dragon Druid, you know, very similar to Cthulhu, kind of sweeps down, and then just a whole bunch of other various uh, Druid archetypes. Um, so yeah, still definitely one of the better um, classes in the in the format. Um, you know, tons of variety. You can go more controlly with Cthulhu or Dragon Druid, or you know, combo focused with Tog, Mechathun, whatever. Um, yeah, Druid just has so many uh, so many high rolls. So, um, it's what whatever win con you put in. If you hit one of your high rolls, you're gonna be able to win some games. It's pretty gross the things Druid can do. Um, Hunter. I'm surprised to see. Sorry, I'm surprised to see odd Druid, token Druid, and beast Druid. Those yeah. are some <laughs> interesting takes because when you think of Druid, you think of like alignment or some. To weak sphere golf shenanigans. O- token summons so druids, yeah. It is really it is really a bi- variety class. Yep. Um yeah, Beast Druid fell off hard. It was it was like a pretty strong deck uh last expansion, but um just kind of fell out of the meta. It didn't like like it didn't lose anything, it's just kinda got yeah, it's, pushed out. It's probably slow, yeah. Yeah. Um but uh, Hunter, pretty much the same things last week. A little bit of a of a decline overall, but um, basically just the same same couple of decks um, being brought very scarcely. Um, Mage, uh, similar situation. Um, basically, barely any changes at all. Actually, um, Quest Mage still being a very strong deck in Conquest. Um, you know, you get to ban the. Ban the Pirate Rogue, and it's just incredibly favored into most of the slower decks of the format. Um, you know, Druids and um, you know, mm-hmm. you know, Reno Paladin, that kind of stuff. Um, Paladin as well. Basically, no changes. It's just Mech Paladin and Reno Paladin. Um, yeah, Mech Paladin um, and and Mech Mage and, and Mage, two of the strongest Rogue counters in the in the game. So um, definitely. Seeing lots of those for the uh, the lineups trying to beat Rogue, um, but I mean Rogue is Rogue. We'll get to that shortly. Um, Priest actually seen a a bit of an increase in Shadow Priest Agro or Agro Priest here um, with you know getting up to up to ten brings. Um, Inner Fire um, still stuck at just six brings. It has fallen off extremely hard. Um, other than that. Um, you know, one one Raza bring, but Priest has definitely fallen off a lot. Um, does seem, I mean, Shadow Priest is kind of, I think, just Pirate Rogue, but a little bit worse in like every aspect. It's, I think, it's a it's a little bit faster than Pirate Rogue, probably, as long as you get Attendant. But like, I don't, I don't think it's faster than Pirate Rogue. I, I, that thing just goes so fast. They're they're extremely similar decks. I think. I think Shadow Priest on its like hitting hitting the best draw possible. Shadow Priest can not kill a little bit earlier, but I'm not I'm not sure. I'm not sure if Pirate Rogue has a turn 3 kill or not. I know Shadow Priest does. Um Pirate Rogue might. I could definitely see it. Coin Coin Swordfish and a bunch of 3 3s something, I don't know. Oh, um gross. But but yeah. Uh <laughs> Speaking of which um, Rogue, we have, yeah, Pirate Rogue, still the most dominant deck of the format, um, still kind of defining the class, and just, you know, most lineups are 
either centered around um, you know, banning the pirate rogue or countering the pirate rogue. But um, this week we have seen a pretty huge jump in mine rogue, which is probably the most significant change from uh, from last week. Um, Sixteen brings and four bands. Um, mine rogue does look pretty real. Um, it's a uh, it's pretty gross how how quickly it can kill. Um, you have nulls, which you know, five five mana four five null is just really really good and the deck already is fine running tradables and passage so you're playing nulls turn one two you know all the time and that just you know helps it's insanely good against aggro um which is a really good thing to have in a deck like mine rogue where you're you know trying to combo off turns you know four five six having the strong anti-aggro tools that are also good you know pressuring tools and other matchups just extremely flexible and the damage this deck can push out is is pretty insane so um you know pirate rogue is still probably the defining deck of the format um so it kind of does suck for mine rogue to have to compete with that for the uh you know that that conquest slot um but it is definitely a capable deck um Uh, uh, the thing that i'm sad about uh given you know uh, competitive play is that mine rogue doesn't have the same uh ha gotcha that has some ladder like oh i was a rogue the whole time mm. uh, because you need to tell your opponent what are you what you're doing when you want to be like sneaky but it's fine. yeah yeah that's that true um i guess yeah slightly worse there mostly mostly just affecting mulligan decisions really i mean you're aiming to trade on one most of the time so um but i mean that can have an impact but but yeah um for uh for shaman um free shaman still maintaining its numbers um you know as a as a conquest deck um not very common on ladder but still being brought pretty significantly and being banned as well um frog shaman has dropped a lot um the nerf to drekthar i mean it's still a like playable deck you just have to cut um the radiance of ashara thing so it loses like its early game high rolls and um you know that does drag down the win rate overall by quite a bit. Um, so it's still probably okay. I seen by you know four brings, two bands. Um, it's still like okay in the right lineup, but overall as a deck, it's it's definitely a, a lot worse and um, you know kind of fell off as as quickly as it uh, as it rose. Um, Warlock still lots of variety. Um, basically no real big changes from, from last week. Um, even Warlock's the top dog, followed by Mechathoon, followed by all the various other Warlock decks that people like to play. Um, yeah, basically, basically same story. Um, variety of Galactory Warlocks and then some niche, you know, Reno Warlock, Pain Warlock, even Reno Warlock. Yeah. Same, same old, same old. Warlock is definitely good. Um, okay, and s- oh, I thought that I read Odd Warlock, but it says Owl. Owl, yeah. I was wondering, like, I was about to DM Ogre being like, what did you do? This- what- like, what are you doing this week, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, no no Odd odd Warlock, but we do have a little bit of Odd Warrior, as well as various other control focused warrior archetypes um does you know kind of kind of in the same same story um it's still you know kind of just a one job class um but actually kind of moving up in brings from last week not by a lot just a little bit um does seem like people are still very keen to uh to bring um control control warrior decks in in wild um which, you know, as we've said in the past, I think overall not the best ladder choice, but in a conquest lineup, it can definitely find its spot if you're, you know, know what your opponent's bringing and have the have the target for it. So, sure. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's all I got. Unless uh, you guys have anything else to say for the uh, the overview. Um, but if not, then uh. Tom, you want to start us off with our our first featured deck of the week? Yeah, of course. Our first featured deck of the week is none other than Jordan MG with his Ignite Mage. 
that he tries and tries to make work, and he got it. It's still bad, but, you know, let's give the guy some credit. I know he's been trying with Kindling Elemental because it discounts the Sanctum Chandler, uh, but the the core is basically still the same as old... Um, uh, is it good to say old Ignite? Like, I feel like that day yeah, I mean, came and, and went, you know? Um, but yeah, I know he tested a bit with Finley, but that didn't go anywhere. But yeah, still the tradables, it's still really dumb. But it's, <laughs> it, do, it does the thing, so, so like, congratulations on Jordan for being high on, on Copium, you know? Yeah. <laughs> As Jordan, yeah. was, as he would say, "Long live the queen," and uh, yeah, I yeah, mean, well, it, it's. I mean, really, it's a very obviously it's a very similar deck. It's just to make up for the fact that apprentice costs a lot more. Um, yeah, you run stuff like Polk Helt to get your Chandlers, and then hopefully your your apprentice. Um, and it just goes off later, essentially. Um, but yeah, good yeah. on Jordan to get a win. Um, yeah. um, for sure. Yeah, I think I think Ignite Mage has kind of just been replaced by Quest Mage as I, the I agree. resident Ice Blog I, I, Ice Block Mage combo deck. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, yeah, I think there. I mean, there are maybe some very niche scenarios when you know Quest Mage like fatigues itself to death and ignite mage doesn't but i think overall quest mage is just much more consistent and can combo off a little faster and you have the capability to you know you know quest mage has a lot of random generation um which means it can easily scam a lot of games ignite mage doesn't really have that and you're very limited on the spells you can run just because of you know you need you need to actually draw your combo on the combo turn so i mean to be honest, i've seen I've seen quest mages running ignite shows because of the fatigue factor, and and yeah, I miss I miss orc being at uh, I, two I, mana. I don't. <laughs> I really miss no because I, I'm I was really a fan of um of silly combo decks with mage, and now mage feels like the only thing that it can do is like just take. A hundred turns, and I'd rather kill my opponent with some silly, oh, you I, know, few APM things that the miserable experience that is Shivara into the third ice block. And oh, look, I got my other parrot, and here's another parrot, and let me copy my other parrot. And that's just, you know, doesn't have the same spirit. Hey, I, I, I just like to go pew pew, you know. Yeah. I, I kind of agree. I think I'm honestly like I'm I'm willing to have uh like I I I, I APM Mage was a really fun deck. I think I'm I'm kind of willing to have it die for the sake of Ignite Mage dying, which is a little sad because you can see people are still making like Ignite Mage a thing. Um well, but uh like I don't want to uh, I don't want to say it, but I wish that because we are wild players here. I wish that somehow they break Ignite in a standard, so they finally nerf Ignite to 3 mana and Sork is back at 2. I, given that now Drekthor is, is uh, nerfed too, like, Drek for 1 minion, if you want to play the APM, it's not even that good. Ignite at 3 mana, the deck is going to be like really hard to pull off because you would need to run another Molten Reflection. I just I just miss my, my sword, dude. Yeah, I cry. I cry every night. Yeah, but um, but yeah. Um, anyway, le, 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 yeah, yeah. Let's stop talking about the yeah uh, Sork death and yeah. and moving on to to the next feature deck. Yep, fish. What do we wanna, have, fish? Wanna tell us about it. Sure. Uh, first, I I didn't mention this because you were running through, I think, but the Saku with the forty four months. That's insane. That's almost four years of being subscribed so thank you very much um oh, wow. and then we'll and then we'll get into we will get into our next deck it is killingers 
uh, Dead Man Hand, Warrior. Um, so yeah, this I guess there's. I, I'm pretty sure this is very similar to what most Dead Man Hands decks, uh, have been lately. Um, I, I mean it's cool to see people still trying to make this deck work and seeing someone get a win with it. It's interesting both of these decks were brought in the same series because Jordan. Jordan's on Wokage and Killinger is on World Shakers. Uh, our player of the it's cool seeing our player of the week also get a featured deck. Um, so yeah, uh, I guess see I'm not too super familiar with the deck. It doesn't look like there's nothing really sticks out as being out of the ordinary for a build of of so, this deck. So, yeah, so I think the. The big like new thing that this deck got is with um with from the depths. Mm -hmm. Once yeah, you've depths in, good. yeah, once you've empty your deck, you can actually use from the depths and brand cold light with dead man's hand to just go infinite basically. And and you oh. also need like a, a shield slam or something to kill off your cold lights. Mm -hmm. Um I don't remember the exact sequencing of it, but it does draw um you know infinite cards as long as you have the APM. So um Theoretically, once you empty your deck, which is you know easier said than done, uh, you can OTK with this um, mm -hmm. now. So, gotcha. What I what I find interesting about this deck is that it runs the all shell with brute, uh, armor smith, and skipper. That some new versions and quote unquote new versions have tried decided to cut uh, completely those cards. Yeah, so that combo it's kind of iffy. I think um I think a lot of versions have kind of moved to uh it was like Forge and Flame, the new destroyer oh, weapon, yeah. all cards equal to its attack. Um, mm -hmm. along with like the uh, I can't remember the card names. It's the the four mana like five one hammer that upgrades. Oh, Black, blacksmithing. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. with the that double hammer, yeah, yeah. So. That's like another card draw engine. I think I mean you definitely need at least one. Um this one is you know definitely more classic DMH. Um so I mean, you know, sometimes sometimes brutes can just win by uh by tempo or you know, just gain a gain a billion armor with armor smiths. Um but you know. Yeah, still a you know still a good deck. Or still a, a passable deck to get wins with. I don't obviously it's not still a, a not a ladder still deck. A, Still a fan favorite deck. It's I'll a say. fan favorite deck, indeed. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, there's very specific players who just love their Dead Man's Hand Warrior. Yeah. Um. So yeah, uh, two decks being brought that have very niche niche followings, and uh, you know, obviously, congrats to both of the players on their wins. Less so happy with Jordan getting the win on Ignite and winning the match, but that's just from my perspective. Um. Yeah. I guess from here we'll go into our next segment yeah um let's go to our our match recap starting in the in the green conference tom you want to uh walk us through the walk us through the standings of course in the green conference we have at the first spot sunken shakers with 114 points having a record of 5-1 Next, we have APM, that this season stands for Anduin Playboy Mansion, with 99 points. Head-to-head -head with F2L Viridian, with, which also has 99 points. The difference is that Anduin's Playboy Mansion has uh, the record of 5-1, and Viridian has a record of 4-2. Next, we have uh, XD, Cyrelia's Disciples, Disciples, sorry, going... 4-2 uh, with 95, 94 points. Oh, tonight, the numbers in my head are going haywire. Then we have the Wargang Greasers. Uh, they don't have a, another name that I could be like, oh, yeah, they are called, the, the I don't know, 6-5 now, um, mm -hmm. with 74 points. Then we have Copium Clam at 66 points. And finally... Closing the Green Conference, we have Bash Bros with 63 points. Uh, a really uh, interesting conference. Uh, the power level after the uh, fourth spot is quite the difference. 
Mm -hmm. uh, going from a record of 4-2 to 1-5. Um, but yeah, that's a green conference for you. Yep, for sure. Um, yeah, it is a very like kind of polarized um, conference, I guess, where you have just, you know, teams at the top and then just a massive gap in the middle. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, I guess we'll go ahead and uh, move on to our our first um uh, you know featured featured match here. Um we have F twelve Iridian versus XD. Um F twelve Iridian losing eleven to fourteen. Um so first off we have me winning three one over Corb. Um Martian doing the same thing, three one over Marty B. Um get me off getting a three oh sweep over Tulio. Triple Lift winning 3-1 over the Rotted Zombie, and Neji Boston getting a 3-2 victory over OTZ. Um, yeah, this was a pretty interesting series. Um, I can speak the most for my personal match. Um, I basically I I had I had in my mind there were three factors um going into this. Uh, one being I could outline up Corb. Um, second being that I would not be able to outskill him, and the third being that I could out RNG him. Um, okay. I did not outline up him. I hard targeted even Warlock, which he did not bring. So I had Shadow Priest and Pirate Rogue against like hard counters to those two decks. Ah, so it was the third one. So it was the <laughs> third one. <laughs> um, this was a, it was a really rough series uh i yeah i i really couldn't have asked for better draw in a lot of my games it it was pretty insane um i feel like i feel like and tell me if i'm wrong it felt like he knows that i know that he knows that i know and it was basically back and forth to see who could counter the other person right uh yeah i mean i yeah, I didn't really like. I uh, Corb's been like hyping up this like even lock and like like even lock combo lineup for like a while that you just ban Rogue with, but he did not bring it this week. So um, yeah. he definitely got me with that. But um, but yeah, um, get me off. I know similar story, kind of hard countered Tulio, um, specifically the quest mage, um, but full sweep there. Um, and that nothing super notable, I don't think. Um, OTZ um, brought Dead Man's Hand, which um, was a mistake. Uh, <laughs> Dead Man's Hand is still bad. I would not recommend people bring the deck. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, but yeah, definitely a good good week win for us. Um, like F twelve still, I think before this week they were still one point above us. But um, yeah, this is just nice trying to stay. Stay up in the standings. Um, we are kind of so it's the the top three teams in each conference, and the two highest after that. Mm -hmm. We're kind of right on the verge of both of those. So we do we do not qualify or we do not currently qualify for top three in this conference. But um, you would there is you would make it on points yeah. because there's a lot more points in green conference than there are in brown conference. Ex exactly. Yeah. So hoping we can just keep that up. Um. Or, you know, if not, maybe we can just, you know, maybe F2L or APM drop out of the top four and we can, um, we can slide in that way. Mm hmm. But, um, maybe, just maybe. But, uh, but yeah, either way, um, Fish, you want to uh, walk us through our, our next, next week, our next Sh match? Sure. We have, uh, Worgen Greasers versus Copium Clan. Uh, Worgen Greasers getting their first win of the season and taking a night and doing it in a pretty dominant fashion. Uh, Maxi getting a 3-0 sweep over Tempo. Um, we have Dankus Dad getting a 3-0 sweep over Kismet. Uh, Just Concede uh, getting a 3-1 win over Glare. Uh, Hudak with a 3-2 over Nabelke. And the uh, only win for Copium Clam coming from Turtle with a 3-0 sweep of Woodford, who is... Oh, Working Greasers are at least starting to find 
some individual wins. Obviously, they're they're far out of the playoff. They're pretty far out of the playoff race. Um, it, especially with how, f especially being twenty points behind the the other team. So, you know, I I think seeing them do well and and taking wins over the teams below them in the standings is a good sign. Um. So yeah, and, and jumping. I guess see, they they probably at least jumped one team. A Copium Clan doing that. But yeah, overall, congratulations. Yep, this is definitely a big win for uh, for Warwick and Greasers. Like you said, it's still pretty late in the season. I I think technic. I don't I don't know actually uh, if I they're mathematically know. eliminated. I don't know how many weeks are left. There's there's three this, weeks left, is there this week and two weeks after. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Um, then it's it's possible that by next week they are mathematically eliminated. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. they they might be just because of how big the just because, like, they can't they they might not be able to catch you as the as the last playoff team. So yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, but um, yeah, it probably depends on what what exactly the scheduling looks like. Agreed. Like if um. You know, if a lot of the like upper teams are playing lower teams, and then the lower teams all like you know full sweep, then I guess there's maybe a chance. But yeah, overall, pretty uh pretty low odds at this point. But mm -hmm. um, but yeah, um, that is it for the green conference. So now I'll move uh, straight over to the brown conference. Um, you'll see, you know, much less of a of a polarized um you know uh spread here. Yeah. Um, spread likely. Um, still the top dog for Brown Conference, uh, five one record, hundred and twelve points. Um, yeah, you know, yeah, been, going into the hundred, yeah, hundred and ten. Uh, excuse me. Um, yeah, been been dominant, you know, all uh, all season really. Um, definitely, definitely proven themselves. Um, mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, they're just by far and away the best team here. Um, Wokage and F12 Celadon are both uh, kind of right next to each other. Um, Wokage having 90 points and F12 Celadon having 89 points. Um, then uh, get tiny jump to Round Earthers going to work with 85 jump or 85 points. Um, then W2F at 79 points. Um, World Shakers down at 73 points, and the Weasel Tunnelers at 66 points. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I mean, big difference here is honestly just all the team records. We have, you know, 5-1, but then we have, you know, 4-1-1, 3-3, another 3-3, a couple 2-4s, and then um, a 1-4-1 versus in Green Conference, it's just 5-1-5-1, So definitely a lot uh, closer, closer here overall. I mean, mm -hmm. you can see spread from... Um, you know, the second through fourth teams are all just five points apart. And then, um, you know, it's just it's just much tighter um, here in Brown Conference than it is in, in green. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, definitely could see um, the standings shift quite a bit. Um, but mm -hmm. Brad likely does seem to be pretty clearly the top contender here. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, Speaking of uh, speaking of Brad Likely, uh, Tom, you want to walk us through our uh, our first match? Of course. So, as you said, Brad Likely uh, has won against the Whistle Tunnelers. They went seventeen to nine. Um, the only match they lost was on the fourth seed, where Super Chicken went one three against Skidless. I'm pronouncing that right. Is it uh, Skittles? Skittles. Skittles. Oh, it's like just like oh the food. Yeah, it, it's it just spells it with a Z at the end. If, and and this yeah. is why my name is Tom Carter. Like you cannot. It's mess so that easy. Up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we have Agent uh, Agent PWE on the first seed, winning against uh, Rickat, going three two. Then we have Nice Jewish Owl. Going 3 1 against Mortal Wombat. Then we have Always Just in Time going 3 2 against Nine Ari Brows. And on the fifth, fifth seed, we have Mole Star going 3 0 against Rachel's Jamis. 
um, yeah, they, they are they are clearly the top contenders. They know what they are doing, and they are a powerful team that we should be looking mm -hmm. looking after. I mean, I say we because I'm on the same conference uh, as they are. Yeah, same here. Uh, moving on, we have Wokage against World Shakers. World Shakers taking the win against... Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Finish you the... Yeah, I got it. Um, yeah, so this is so uh, <laughs> no, this is World Shakers versus Wilkich. I, I say World Shakers first because we got the win, uh, sixteen to fourteen, very close week. As you see, we we got max every we got the maximum amount of points every game going to five, uh, five games. The week started with myself versus Hazer, um, very close match. It came down to deciding if Mech Paladin or if Reno Shaman would get swept, and my Mech Paladin was able to. Uh, pull it out and then next after that i believe was a uh, killinger uh killinger and um i think since for I th yeah killinger played pr uh pretty closely with um quickly check the discord it was um ben Nurk. it was snapper and killinger played very uh, pretty much at the same time snapper taking a uh a three to two loss to Jordan and Killinger getting a three two win over Memnark, uh, getting Player of the Week for his reverse sweep, and then um, Sinferno and Gumby, uh, Sinferno going three to two and Gumby also going three to two. I feel like everybody played pretty close together, uh, and we all played pretty early in the week as well. Um, so definitely a, a very close week. A, a couple of game fives going the other way, and uh, you know. Well, we don't we don't get the extra couple of points we need to help keep us in the keep us in the playoff race. It's you know realistically, if we're looking at it, unless Green Conference falls apart, like Brown Conference is probably only getting two teams in the playoffs, and Bread likely is so far ahead. It's like the teams just have to catch Celadon, Round Earthers, and Wokage. Um, unfortunately, I don't really know how our schedule our schedule is very difficult the rest of the way. Uh, going up against Sucking Shakers and Bread Likely in the next three weeks. So we'll see how that plays out. But I'm really, really happy to come into the to come in and help the team get a get a weak win over Wokic. Yeah, yeah, for sure. This was a yeah crazy close week. Um, game fives all the way across the board. So yeah, max points possible um, being scored here. Um, and yeah, pretty yeah. you know evenly distributed. World Shakers just you know barely uh. Mm -hmm. Barely getting over Wokage, so yeah, definitely, definitely a good win for them. Wokage, kind of one of the um, top dogs of, of Brown Conference. Um, yeah, you know, pretty significantly behind Fred, likely, but still, still having a very, uh, very strong season. So, um, yeah. Um, but with that, um, we can move on to our player power rankings, starting with our honorable mentions. Um. So we have uh, Maxi Bond, 1234, going 4 to 2 with a score of 3.27. Always Just in Time, also going 4 to 2 with a score of 4.16. Itachi, going 5 and 0 with a score of 4.21. Bone Masher, 4 to 2 with a score of 4.22. And Corbett, going 4 to 2 with a score of 4.39. Tom, you want to walk us through the top 10? Of course. So on the tenth place we have the Ignite player Jordan MG <laughs> going four two with a par of four point five six. Ninth we have Seth going five one with a score of four point six six. On the eighth we have Ataraxial going four two with a score of four. Point A2. On the seventh, we have Gimme Lamp going 5 1 with a score of 4.96. Uh, on the sixth, we have EPT Hopper going 5 1, finally breaking the 5 score with a 5.22. And on the fifth, we have Lasagna, my teammate, of course. Uh, going 4-2 uh, with a score of 5.45. On the fourth, we have Nops going 4-1 with a score of 
uh, five, three. On the third, we have the first seed of Brett Likely, HNPWE going 5-1 with a score of 5.95. On the second, we have 6J uh, going 4-2 with a score of 6.54. You can see how much it <laughs> just explodes after the third. And finally, I have, uh, I don't know who this is. Um, <laughs> what does he say here? Uh, oh, Hyperin uh, going 6 0 undefeated with almost one hold point, uh, respectively, from the second uh, PPR with a score of 7.44. Actually, insane. Yep. These, these rankings are, are not rigged. Um, let it be known that these were. These were made by Marty, not um, not me. Um, all all based on <laughs> all based on uh, Marty's algorithms. Um, yeah, this is not at all rigged. You can you know tr- trust me. Just just you just gotta believe me, man. I I trust you. Um, I mean, much. you're the only player who has played every week and is undefeated. Obviously, we see Itachi in the honorable mentions at five and zero. Oh. Um, and there are some, you know, and players who have played like one week, like myself, and have and haven't lost, like, um, so yeah, uh, you know, like Hyperin said, there's the algorithm, um, and it determines kind of the the points that you see next to the records, um, and to everyone on the list, obviously, congratulations on making it and keep it up if you want to, you know, keep moving up the list, um. And for everyone else, um, I guess I guess you can spam rigged if you want, but <laughs> it's this point it's not. Trust me. Um, and for everyone else, uh, you know, get good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess that's a way to put it. But yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, since um, since Marty's not here, I'm uh, I'm just gonna point out. Um, Viridian finally kicked out of the top ten. Yep. Um, not a, not a single F twelve Viridian member in the in the top ten here. Um, True, there isn't there yeah. is one F twelve member, but it's not from yeah. Viridian. It, it, not that from would, Viridian. That would be Ataraxial on uh, yeah. on um F twelve Celadon. There yeah. is three me- <laughs> there's three members of Shakers in the top ten. That is crazy. Yeah, yeah that six team's... six J Hopper and, and Seth. Yeah, yeah the team's... That's that awesome. team's kind of good, I've I've heard. Ah, uh, yeah, they are definitely kind of good. <laughs> just, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Um, um yeah. But, um, is... but yeah, there are no match previews for this week, um, due to the mini set. So, um, go back to the main screen. That, we can just go to our yeah our final section here, the Ooh. question of the week. And um, bang, get the other. So, we get the other featured deck off. There we go. So. Um, question of the week: How impactful is the new mini set, specifically for Wild? Big Shaman. Uh, yep, <laughs> I was going to say the same thing, and I, and I think the deck is full of copium. It's probably only uh, it's, Blue it's, Train it's and f- White Light tweeting the hell out of it. <laughs> it it does silly things. I I I, I do believe. That it, it's it's impacting ladder. I, I played games and I I was either playing against decks that were trying to essentially beat Big Shaman or decks that were or just Big Shaman itself. Um, I think I think if you obviously if you hit the right high roll and it's a little bit more consistent with some of the cards in the deck. Um, that we've been that we've seen people running. Um, it definitely can. It can definitely do some some silly things. Uh, but I I don't like I I think. It obviously has yet to be seen after one after like you know one day, if it's going to be a, a deck here that's here to stay. Yeah, people have realized that Mud Morpher and Ancestral Skull Eureka uh, actually pull the other limbs out of the Colossals, and that's quite the deal. Yeah. Yeah, but um... yeah, I don't. I, I haven't seen anything else besides besides people. And like this is just being honest. Besides people being uh, bitching on Twitter about the box, I I haven't heard much much else interesting about the the mini set. Yeah, I think 
definitely Big Shaman is the the biggest thing here. Um, I know that there's been a little bit of like experimentation with uh, like Mali Druid. I'm still curious to see how that'll play out. With the has that new like one mana deal one twice, which is you know really good with Mali Ghost, obviously. Yeah. Um, could potentially be you know good just an alternate win con. Um, you know Mali's a dragon, so it kind of fits in well with um you know DN Druid. Um, but um. I what's, mean, what's what's the end? <laughs> Dra- dragon. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, no, yeah, you can you can throw that in a uh, hundred win conditions, uh, Druid. I think that if they ever make, I don't know, fifty cards decks, Druid is just going to drool <laughs> so much. You can you can add so many win conditions in this boy. You know, like the old meme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, just, trying to, just trying to fit so many win conditions. Yeah. Of course. But yeah, I I don't think I don't think there's anything else on the on the mini set that has impacted uh wild. Uh maybe like I wish someone discovers something that is broken, not bugged, broken, or like we see a new archetype besides big shaman. Uh, being relevant, maybe not for ladder, but maybe something that in GHL makes sense because you have the option to ban. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I'm really hoping to see something new, as always. Yeah, um, I think, yeah, definitely like you said, still, you know, kind of waiting to see how things pan out, but it is kind of looking like Big Shaman is just the, you know, <laughs> no pun intended, the biggest thing from the from the mini set. Um, Colossal, colossals are really good with the you know the cheating out effects that uh yeah that shaman has. So, um, but yeah, um, other than that, there's not a not really a whole lot going on. Um, but you know, thirty five cards, surely, surely some of them will have a place somewhere. Um, a lot of them are kind of uh support cards. We may see some uh some I mean, stuff you play later on. So. The best card so far, it's it's Neptulon. I've I've seen people playing playing it in Death Rattle Rogue. Like that thing slaps, and it slaps hard. Yeah, I think the just the way like Neptulon works with like the stats on the main body not mattering are really good with a lot of the effects that cheat them out. So you know, you know, the main thing is be like Muck Morpher, obviously, but. Mm-hmm. If Neptulon sticks, it's just 24 damage on its own. Like, yeah. I think a lot of people were comparing it to Anixia, um, like kind of down on it just because it like doesn't clear as you know it's not it's not as flexible to clear, which is it, which is true. Um, you know, playing an Anixia for 10 mana, you can afford to do a lot more than just playing Neptulon. But Neptulon, when cheated out, is a lot more threatening than Anixia. So, um, you know. Yeah, with Wild having that, all those tools, it's yeah. I don't think that I want to play Onyxia yeah. with my big shaman, but thanks. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay. for sure. Um, but yeah, um, I don't have anything else uh, unless you uh, you guys do. Then um, nope, now we can uh, we can wrap up. Um, so yeah, um, thank you all for uh, for coming out again. Um, yeah, uh, we'll hope to uh, to see you all again uh, again next week. Good, uh, good luck with the, um, you know, experimenting with the mini set. Um, try not to get a, uh, get too mad on um, with all the all the bugs coming around, especially in standard. Um, but uh, yeah, no, that's we, all I got. We we play wild here. We don't we don't mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Bugs aren't uh, aren't relevant here. Exactly. Uh, Everything is broken besides the bugs, so it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Anyway, yes, as Happyrin said, like, thank you so much for watching, and we'll catch you next time. Yep. Tune in tomorrow night for Friday Night Fights. We will see you all then. Bye-bye.